Hi, I'm Dr. Jan Jaffer, and this is Got Teeth, a patient-centric monthly podcast featuring local health experts. So today I'm talking with Dr. Oris Pilipovich, who is one of the partners of Choo Choo Dentistry, who has joined, you know, Trek actually recently. And we're going to be talking about children's teeth. So thanks, Oris. Thanks for taking the time to do this with us. Thanks for having me, Jan. I'm happy to do this with you. Yeah. So, you know, I have a 10-month-old, and I wanted to learn a little bit about what am I supposed to do? When should my son come into the dentist? And, and what can I be doing at home to start taking care of his teeth? Oh, great question. Uh, typically, we like to see the kids around one year of age, once there's a couple teeth in the mouth. And that for, even though there's not a lot of teeth in the mouth yet, the first appointment is more for educating the parent. There's a few things that we always review. We encourage parents to always start brushing their teeth once they start seeing some teeth in there with some fluoride toothpaste. We also recommend to parents to not use a bottle at nighttime because, especially with milk, because milk at nighttime in some kids it can start to cap, start to cause cavities very quickly. Uh, so there's, again, the first appointment is more about educating the parent. We start talking about soother use, potential any habits. We start to tell the parent about what to anticipate over the next couple of years. What can they expect to, to with their child's teeth and how they can take good care of them? Because it's really a lifelong process about how to take care of teeth. And we want to start them when they're young. We want to get the kids familiar with our office, get them used to coming, get to know us. It just makes the whole process and the whole journey of the dental experience to be just a little bit easier. Okay. So you brought up something and I, and I wanted to ask about this and you've already talked about it a little bit, but fluoridated toothpaste. So when do we actually start that on kids? Because I've you know, I've heard you obviously don't want to ingest too much right, of that. Right. And kids don't spit very well. I, right. I'm, you know, training my two and a half year old to make sure he spits every time he brushes his teeth, loves to brush his teeth. So how do we, when do we start using fluoride in our toothpaste for the kids? Well, we typically recommend that people start using fluoride toothpaste right away. Right away, okay. Yeah, we don't like, again, you don't want to be swallowing too much of it because incorporating it or drinking too much of it is not good for the teeth. So we usually at a young age, if they're just swallowing it, just to use a tiny little bit, just a tiny little smear. We'll just kind of dab the, the toothpaste on there. They say the size of a grain of rice, and even that's even more than you really need. But it's good to get some fluoride exposure. Once they get a little bit older and they can start spitting, that's when we start recommending to use a little bit more, maybe the size of a, like a pea size amount of fluoride. Um, as long as you're confident that they, that they can start spitting. Okay. Now, kids who are at a bit higher risk for cavities, kids who have a history of cavities or the parents have a higher risk of cavities, or if there's areas where we know that cavities may be starting, we'll actually recommend sometimes using a fluoride toothpaste. We think that's, or a fluoride, I'm sorry, a fluoride rinse at nighttime before okay. they go to bed. Um, so fluoride exposure is great, because the way fluoride works is that it actually gets incorporated into the outer layers of the teeth called enamel. Okay, now enamel is hard, but when it actually comes into contact with fluoride, it actually makes it harder. And it actually helps to prevent cavities. It also helps to remineralize or actually stop cavities in their progression. Um, so it's a great tool. That's why when you come to the dentist and you get a cleaning done, we usually end the appointment with a fluoride treatment. Mm -hmm. It's a higher dose of fluoride, which again just helps to strengthen the teeth and help prevent cavities in the teeth. So we love fluoride and we promote it all the time. Uh, we think you should start using it right from the start. But again, the key is when you have just a baby, like for your little 10 month old, yeah. you don't want to use very much. Okay. Typically by around two and a half to three is when kids start to spit and yeah. that's when you can start to increase the amount a little bit as okay. they get more confident in that. No, that's really good to know. Um, and then you talked about something else. So you talked about cavities. So, you know, I've had parents come in and they say, well, these kids are, these teeth are going to fall out. They're only, they're going to get another set of teeth. Mm -hmm. Why are we fixing or spending all this money to make sure these kids have good teeth? You know, there's a cavity. Let's take the tooth out and let's not worry about it. Yeah, we get asked that all the time. And that's a very good question because baby teeth do fall out. Typically between six and eight years old is when the front ones fall out. And the back ones usually fall out between about the ages of 10 to 12. But baby teeth are important. They're gonna have them for a long time. They're important for functioning. And because the teeth are so small and the enamel is so thin, cavities can, can start to spread and get bigger much quicker than in adult teeth. Okay, so it's usually better to fix them while they're small and easily managed. And we can do a simple little procedure, um, do a little filling or sealant and whatnot to help slow it down. Because if you leave a cavity on a baby tooth and you allow it to get bigger, then we're looking at more extensive treatment. You're looking at potentially some stainless steel crowns, baby root canals, or you have to take out teeth. And if you remove a baby tooth, one of the 
big functions of a baby tooth is that it actually helps to preserve the space. So if we remove a baby tooth too soon, the other teeth will want to start to shift into that space. And of course, there's an adult tooth growing underneath it. Mm -hmm. So if you remove it, then you have to worry about the space loss of potential orthodontic treatment in the future. So by taking good care of your baby teeth and catching things while they're small, it can make the procedures much simpler for the child and also less expensive in the long run as well. So one other thing that you mentioned um, was just about sealants. So are there some preventative stuff that you guys can do, the dentists can do inside their offices to help prevent cavities? I mean, you talked about fluoride mm -hmm. being one. Mm -hmm. um, what else is it? What else is it possible for the dentist to do to help those? Yeah, a sealant, a sealant is, a, is a very effective way of helping prevent cavities. Usually we do it on the adult teeth at the very back, usually in the six-year molars or the 12-year molars. Those teeth have very deep grooves in them. And sometimes plaque and bacteria can get in there and it can be very difficult to brush out. So a sealant is just a little coating that we paint over top of it. Doesn't involve any drilling, no freezing. It's a very simple, very inexpensive way to help prevent cavities on the back teeth. And there's also other things called SDF or silver diamine fluoride, where if we start to see the start of a little cavity, we can often stop it from progressing that way too. So again, these are sort of things that we do. We, we really believe in prevention and preventing cavities. That's why we really promote good oral hygiene, good diet, things like sealants um, can help prevent cavities from progressing and, or even starting in the first place. Perfect. No, that's great. And you actually always prompt my next question. So you talked about diet. So we know that cavities happen because of acid in the mouth or right. you know some sort of uh, cause that we're causing the teeth to break down because of what we're putting on them. So explain to us a little bit about diet. How do we prevent cavities apart from brushing and flossing our teeth? What else can we do? Because nutrition's got to be a big part of this. Absolutely, yeah. The way I like to tell it to parents is it's very multifactorial the way cavities are formed. What I like to say is to form a cavity, you need to have a tooth with some plaque or bacteria on it. Basically what happens is anytime you eat or drink anything sweet, refined sugars, carbohydrates, the bacteria and the plaque break down that sugar and actually creates an acid. It's that acid which then breaks down the tooth. Okay? And everyone's different. It depends what kind of bacteria you have in your mouth. It depends on your saliva composition that helps to neutralize the acid. Um, you can't control some of those things, but you can control the diet, which so we really want to cut down on refined sugars. Things like juices, things like sticky things like gummy bears, crackers, which are loaded in carbohydrates. Those are things that the bacteria just love to break down and form the acid. Okay, so we like to promote healthy things like um, yogurts and cheeses and healthy snacks like that. And water is the best thing as well. Because, and also when it comes to snacking, one of the important things to remember is it's not always the amount of sugar that you get, but it's often the frequency of it too. Because if you think about it, if any time you eat or drink anything sweet, it covers all the teeth in sugar. After 15, 20 minutes or so, the saliva's gonna help rinse most of it off. So if you take another one sip and then half, letter, half an hour later take another sip, it's gonna, it's gonna cover the teeth in exactly the same way all over again. You start the cycle all over again. So if you're gonna give your kids snacks, try to give it all at one time, all within one sitting, and let them have some water afterwards to help rinse off the teeth. It's the sippers and the grazers that are constantly sipping on stuff and chewing on stuff all day long that can sometimes get more problems because their teeth are constantly being bathed in that sugar. So the bottom line is try to cut down on the refined sugars as much as you can. Really watch you know, crackers and, and sweets and things like that and really try to keep the teeth clean as, for, as much as you can for as long as possible. Yeah, no, those are some great points. So, I mean, stay away from those refined sugars, but have a sip of water afterwards. Right? Absolutely. That'll help. Yeah. And don't do it for a long period of time. If they're going to yeah. have the snacks or if they're going to have a sugar dessert, yeah. have it at once and then yeah. try to stay on some That's exactly snacks. it. Yeah. So, you know, if you're going to have something sweet, either have it after a meal since the teeth are already co already covered and give them some water afterwards. Or if you're the good, they're going to snack something that has some sugar in it, try to either brush or at least have some water with it as well to help rinse it off. Okay. So that's a lot of great information. So one of the things that we haven't quite talked about is you're actually a pediatric dentist. You're not a general dentist. And there's, right. a, there's a difference. So yeah. can you explain to me a little bit about what is a pediatric dentist? Sure. Like pediatric dentist, we are, we are another dental specialist. Just like orthodontists, they do braces and moving around teeth. And endodontists will do root canals. We specialize only in the needs of children. So we're like the pediatricians of the dental field. So we've gone to school for an extra two to three years. 
um, of extra training beyond dental school. And we just focus on the needs of children, uh, how to deal with anxiety. Um, you know, we get referred a lot. So what, so what we see in our, in our practices is, is, is we also know that general dentists see a lot of kids as well. And, mm -hmm. and they do a very good job uh, dealing with kids as well. But there are kids that are very anxious. They have that they're afraid to come to the dentist. Um, so we we have a bit more experience in dealing with kids who are anxious. Um, we also deal with kids who have extensive dental needs, kids who have a lot of work. They're really small, and they just need a little bit more help um, to help them get through some of these procedures. Um, so, so, but we also we don't also see. We don't only see referrals, we also see people who just want to bring their kids to someone who only sees kids. You know, we don't do adult stuff, we don't do root canals, we don't do dentures, we don't do extensive gum disease. So we're really focused on that. And a lot of kids, a lot of parents like to bring their kids to an environment where it's really fun. You know, our offices are all geared towards kids and a lot of parents like to have their children in an environment like that for their dental needs. Yeah, that, and that totally makes sense. And I know I wanted to learn a little bit about, you know, Choo Choo and, and you know, you and uh, Dr. Brad have, Brad Kroski have been a part of Choo Choo for a number of years and, and tell us a little bit about, you know, what makes Choo Choo different? Sure. Yeah. Um, well, we've been around for, our practice has been around for about 20 years. Our, our original location here in Marta Loop was opened about 20 years ago. Um, since then, we now have four locations. Uh, we have one here, one in Lincoln Park close by, one in Marlboro, and our newest office is in Cochrane. Um, all of our, we have about six to eight dentists, I think, in our practice now. Um, and all of us are, are really geared towards kids. So all of our staff are geared towards kids. Um, our offices are very kid friendly. We've got we've got playrooms, we've got clubhouses, we've got video games, uh, fish tanks. So we really, some people say that our, our offices are like a big playground and we do a bit of dentistry around here too. So it's a really fun sort of environment for the kids. Our, our staff and our dentists are really passionate about kids and trying to make it the, the best experience possible. Awesome. Well, that's great. I mean, thank you for your time. I think there's a lot of information that we got there and learned a little bit about how to take care of my own kids, even though I know dentistry. I mean, you're always learning something as you're talking to people. So I uh, really appreciate your time. Absolutely. Happy to do this. Thanks.